This is Dr. Mark Scheuer, Persist Chief Medical Officer. Reviewing lengthy continuous EEG recordings was part of my daily work for nearly two decades, first as Director of the Clinical Epilepsy Program at Columbia University, and later as Director of the University of Pittsburgh Epilepsy Center. The review of a prolonged EEG is a time and resource intensive process. It often involves the efforts of more than one person. In this video, I'll be demonstrating how I use Persist's EEG analysis software to rapidly identify seizures in a typical epilepsy monitoring unit recording. This demonstration will include both Persist's latest generation highly accurate seizure detector and its advanced EEG trending software. Physicians or EEG technologists can use this EEG review process as a first step to quickly identify most seizures in prolonged EEG recordings. This capability allows the monitoring team to efficiently focus attention on events of interest early on in the review. It also serves as a cross-check to help the monitoring team avoid missing events that might escape recognition during rapid visual review of the raw EEG. In this example, I'll be performing an initial review of a 38-hour long EEG obtained from a patient with medication-resistant epilepsy. But first, let's take a look at the most common method currently used for this type of EEG review. The entire EEG would be visually scanned at 40 to 60 times real speed. Here I'm showing a high-speed review occurring at 40 times real speed. Because such a review requires the reader's full concentration for an extended period of time, and because of the rapid paging involved in this process, monitoring teams recognize that some events will inevitably be missed. When a potential event of interest is seen during rapid EEG review, the reader pauses the recording, pages back, and reviews that segment of EEG more carefully. At a review speed of 40 times real time, without pausing for any other review, it would take an expert reviewer about one hour to review the 38 hours of EEG shown in this example. The expert reviewer who performed the initial visual review of the raw tracing in this case recognized only five of seven seizures present in the recording. The two seizures that eluded recognition during standard visual review were briefer, more subtle, and had different spatial distribution than the other five seizures. Those two different seizures were identified only through a review of the EEG trending graphs. Now let's turn to how I review this EEG using Persist Seizure Detection and EEG Trending software. My first pass review will focus on determining whether any seizures occurred, and if so, how many. There were no push-button events marked by the patient or staff during this particular recording. Had there been any push-button events, I'd have reviewed those, too, during the first pass. To perform the first step of this review, I display, on the same screen, the EEG, the EEG trending graphs, and comments that were automatically generated by Persist's latest generation seizure detection algorithm. Although I won't be discussing the interpretation of the EEG trending graphs in detail, I will provide a brief overview of the graphs shown in this particular trending panel, which is one that I often use for seizure hunting. This particular 30-minute trend example demonstrates a graphically prominent seizure that comes to involve both hemispheres roughly 12 minutes into the trend window. At the top of the panel is a seizure detector graph, which simply shows a red bar if a seizure has been detected at any particular time. Next is the seizure probability graph, which ranges from 0 to 1. This is based on output from an artificial neural network that's been trained to recognize seizure-like patterns. Seizure detections occur when a sufficient probability has been exceeded for a sufficient amount of time. Unlike previous generation detectors that usually marked only one detection point, the neural network usually marks much of the full extent of a seizure, as shown in this example. Here, the arrows show the start and stop of a seizure as determined by visual re review of the EEG. The persist detector's marking closely matches the seizure's extent. The rhythmic run detection and display graphs are next. These depict the rhythmic activity in the left and right hemispheres, respectively. Increasing amplitude of rhythmicity at any particular frequency is represented by a color scale going from yellow to green-blue to blue. This is actually a three-axis graph in which the color scale represents the third axis. The inset image demonstrates the three-axis nature of this graph. 
The next graph shows an asymmetry spectrogram. It indicates how asymmetric EEG activity is between homologous electrodes on the left and right using a color scale that ranges from white when there is perfect symmetry to dark blue when amplitude at a particular frequency is heavily weighted towards the left or dark red-brown when the activity at a particular frequency is weighted towards the right. The color scaling is similar to that shown on this map of the coast of South America where depth below sea level is represented in shades of blue and height above sea level is represented in shades of red with the coastline at sea level being white. Next is a graph showing two lines that represent the average amplitude of the EEG envelope in the left and right hemispheres. This provides a general indication of the amplitude of the EEG on the left and right with the left being shown as a blue line and the right as a red line. Let's start the EEG review. Whenever I click on the screen a small ring will appear around the cursor. I click on the first seizure detection listed in the comments section. This causes both the EEG page and the EEG trending graphs associated with that detection to appear on screen. The bipolar longitudinal EEG shows a pattern consistent with the left hemisphere's predominant seizure, and the 30-minute trending graphs show multiple changes supporting the occurrence of a discrete seizure at the blue vertical cursor line. These changes include a marked peak in the neural network seizure probability graph, evolving rhythmic patterns in the left and right hemispheres as shown on the rhythmic run detection and display graphs, a sudden shift in EEG symmetry across multiple frequencies as shown in the asymmetry graph, and a left greater than right increase in amplitude shown on the EEG peak envelope graphs. By clicking just before the seizure related changes on the trending graphs and then paging forward through the associated EEG, I'm able to rapidly confirm the ictal nature of this event. Clicking on the next detection brings us to a new seizure which shows a somewhat different pattern on the EEG trending graphs. The trending graphs suggest this seizure is more confined to the left hemisphere than was the last and that the amplitude increase during the seizure is not as great as had been present in the prior event. Clicking just before the prominent trend changes and then paging forward through the EEG allows immediate confirmation that this is a seizure and that its evolution differs from that of the seizure just reviewed. As suggested by the trending graphs, the seizure is more confined to the left and generally has lower amplitude as compared with the first seizure. By clicking on the remaining detections in the list, I'm able to rapidly confirm that five seizures were correctly detected by the algorithm. There were no false positives. This took me two minutes to review, and the detected seizures corresponded to the five seizures identified by the expert during full record review. This level of accuracy is commonly seen with Persist's latest generation seizure detector. The algorithm is much more accurate than previous generations of detector software. The false positive rate is very low, usually only one or two per day in adults and school-aged children undergoing EMU evaluation. The detector's ability to correctly mark real seizures is also much improved compared to prior generations. In persist internal testing on a large set of prolonged EEGs, the detector correctly marked, on average, about 90% of all seizures. By combining this highly accurate seizure detector with a review of the EEG trending graphs and any patient or staff initiated push button events, the yield of correct seizure identification on a rapid first pass review is very high. Next I turn to review of the trending graphs. Because I'm searching for patterns suggestive of seizures, I'm using a 30 minute trend view. This allows me to see even brief patterns suggestive of seizure activity. Although a longer trend view could be used for this process, using too long a window can result in loss of seizure recognition sensitivity and an increase in the number of false positives requiring evaluation. Using a 30 minute trend window, I'm able to scan through a day's worth of trends in several minutes. When I note a pattern of possible significance, I click on that spot in the trend window and can immediately assess the associated EEG. Clicking on a small sub-threshold seizure probability peak in the first half hour of the recording shows only noise and artifact in the underlying EEG. Paging forward, typical background patterns and physiological patterns are evident, but nothing of interest is seen until about three hours into the record. 
Then, a brief but clear-cut discontinuity is evident in the alpha and beta regions of the left hemispheric rhythmicity graph. Briefly zooming in to a 10-minute time window allows better visualization of this unique change. The alpha band narrows and becomes much darker blue, indicating a substantial increase in a specific rhythmic alpha pattern. Though brief, this pattern shows some downward slope, signifying an evolution in frequency. Clicking just before that area, and then paging through the associated EEG, reveals fairly well-defined but low-amplitude alpha and beta patterns that evolve primarily over the left hemisphere. These patterns are consistent with the seizure, and by pressing a function key I mark the record for later detailed review. I won't show the majority of my review of the EEG trends, but I will highlight some of the findings evident in the trends. Many hours into the record, the previously reviewed seizures, the ones that were detected, are again seen in the trends. Another seizure beginning with rhythmic alpha-beta activity, similar to the other, is also discovered. There's a distinct rhythmic alpha pattern evident on the rhythmicity graphs. Several prominent asymmetric increases in left hemispheric rhythmic activity are also found, and these correspond to runs of left temporal sharply contoured rhythmic delta activity with intermixed faster patterns that persist for 8 to 12 seconds before abating. My complete review of the EEG trend graphs for this 38-hour recording required about 6 minutes. Thus, over the course of a total of about 8 minutes, I've been able to identify 5 seizures using the seizure detector output alone, and 2 additional electrographically subtle seizures of a different type by reviewing the EEG trending graphs. Also, several brief runs of high-amplitude, sharply contoured rhythmic left temporal delta activity were identified. The independent expert's visual review of the entire 38-hour long EEG did not reveal additional seizures. As noted before, the reviewer who performed the visual review of the entire EEG didn't recognize the brief rhythmic alpha seizures, which in this case were identified only through review of the EEG trending graphs. This illustrates the clinical utility of reviewing the EEG trending graphs as a cross-check to maximize recognition of diagnostically important events. Thus, in this case, an 8-minute review of automated seizure detections and EEG trending graphs yielded more clinically important information than an expert 60- to 70-minute review of the entire EEG recording. Physicians or EEG technologists can use the same EEG review process as a first step to quickly identify most seizures and many other clinically important findings in prolonged EEG recordings. This capability allows the monitoring team to efficiently focus attention on events of interest early on in the review.